most people cautious about buying a home. But for the ultra-rich, opulent real estate is a must. These homes redefine the meaning of luxury, with amenities fit for royalty and price tags that restrict these homes to individuals with well over a billion dollars. From French chateaus to Indian mega towers, these homes sprawl to unimaginable sizes. Today we are counting down the top 10 biggest houses in the world. Mukesh Ambani is one of the wealthiest people in the world and holds the title of India's richest man with a net worth of more than $40 billion. Hence, it doesn't come as a surprise that his residence in Mumbai is a mansion worth a whopping $2 billion. Named Antilia, the Ambani residence is the most sought-after house in the coastal city of Mumbai and is the world's most expensive house according to some reports. The Antilia is so huge and grand that it's visible throughout Mumbai. The gargantuan skyscraper is also a major attraction for its odd and uneven shape. The building reaches 550 feet with over 400,000 square feet of interior space against the Mumbai skyline. Boasting several rooftops and helipads, the structure was designed by American-based architects on 48,000 square feet of land in downtown South Mumbai. The building's construction took four years to complete. There are three helipads on the roof, an entire floor dedicated to servicing Ambani's many cars, a health floor with a jacuzzi, indoor pool, and ice room for the family to experience snow indoors. Antilia consists of 27 floors, out of which six are reserved for parking that can accommodate up to 168 cars. Among many other indulgences, the house has four dedicated rooms for hanging gardens where residents can go to relax. It is certainly an impressive property. The Biltmore Estate is an enormous private home and tourist attraction in Asheville, North Carolina. The main residence is a chateau-esque style mansion built by George Washington Vanderbilt II between 1889 and 1895 and is the largest privately owned house in the United States at 178,926 square feet of floor space and 135,280 square feet of living area. Still owned by George Vanderbilt's descendants, it remains one of the most prominent examples of the Gilded Age architecture. George Washington Vanderbilt II was an heir to the Vanderbilt fortune, which was amassed through steamboats, railroads, and various business enterprises. Construction of the house began in 1889 and continued well into 1896. In order to facilitate such a large project, a woodworking factory and brick kiln, which produced 32,000 bricks a day, were built on site, and a three-mile railroad spur was constructed to bring materials to the building site. Construction on the main house required the labor of well over 1,000 workers and 60 stonemasons. Vanderbilt went on extensive buying trips overseas as construction on the house was in progress. He returned to North Carolina with thousands of furnishings for his newly built home, including tapestries, hundreds of carpets, prints, linens, and decorative objects, all dating between the 15th century and the late 19th century. Among the few American-made items were the more practical oak drop front desk, rocking chairs, a walnut grand piano, bronze candlesticks, and a wicker wastebasket. Today, the estate is one of Asheville's biggest tourist attractions, and the estate is valued at about $300 million. According to Forbes, Joseph Safra is the second richest Brazilian and the world's richest banker with a net worth of $15.9 billion. He heads the banking and investment empire Safra Group. The Safras are one of the most prominent Brazilian families. At their magnificent estates in Sao Paulo, Brazil, business deals are sealed for massive sums. Family affairs have always been conducted far from the spotlight's glare. The three brothers never betrayed any hint of internal conflict that is bound to exist with family ventures in massive financial dealings. They have a policy of resolving differences by coming to mutual resolution, always within the family, away from public scrutiny. Though the Safra palaces are not open to the public, those close to the family describe them as extraordinarily beautiful, even by the standards of Sao Paulo's community of millionaires. This Californian-style residence spreads over a vast area of 230,000 square meters. It comprises 103 rooms, 24 of which are bedrooms with luxurious marble ensuite bathrooms. The house also features beautifully landscaped gardens, as well as private woodland, in addition to its renowned feature, a $3 million heated marble driveway. And of course, a house this big does not lack for a swimming pool. There are five swimming pools in the mansion, including an infinity pool. And if swimming is not your sport of choice, the house also includes a fully automated two-lane bowling alley, a squash court, and a tennis court. If all that's not enough, this giant mansion includes a customizable cinema with a 50-seat capacity as well. The estate is valued at $138 million.
Wittenhurst, London's largest private house, was built between 1913 and 1920 on an 11-acre plot in Highgate, a wealthy hilltop neighborhood north of the city center. First owned by Arthur Crossfield, an English soap magnate, the mansion was designed in the Queen Anne style and contained 25 bedrooms, a 70-foot-long ballroom, and a glass rotunda. The views from its gardens over Hampstead Hearth and across the capital were among the loveliest in London. For decades, parties at Wittenhurst attracted potentates and royals, including in 1951 Elizabeth, the future queen. Wittenhurst was bought by the family of the Russian billionaire Andrei Guryev through an offshore company called Saffron Holdings, located in the tax haven of the British Virgin Islands for 50 million pounds in 2008. It has 65 rooms spread across three floors, including 25 bedrooms. One of the largest is the ballroom, measuring 70 feet long with a height of 20 feet. It has oak flooring and the timber wall panels are in walnut, with carved cornices embellished with gold leaf. Other rooms are the drawing room, study, entrance hall, and staircase, and most of the bedrooms are all in an opulent classical style. Other richly decorated rooms include the dining room, Chinese room, billiard room, and the gallery hallway. Access to the property is via a three-fingered gatehouse. When remodeling is complete, it will spread over 90,000 square feet, second in size only to Buckingham Palace. David Siegel made his money in timeshares, but ironically when it came time for his own place, he decided to build the property. In fact, he's still building 10 years later and is not quite finished. By some estimates, his Versailles will be the single largest residence in the country at around 90,000 square feet. The name is an apt choice, as it's modeled on the famous French palace, and it's indeed palatial. The waterfront estate on a 10-acre Lake Butler Peninsula with almost a mile and a half of shoreline is scheduled to have all the usual bells and whistles. Two theaters, 10 kitchens, a 20-car garage, two elevators, three pools, and a bowling alley, indoor roller rink, and arcade, just one of each. The doors and windows were constructed using some of the last remaining Brazilian mahogany at a cost of $4 million. Exterior walls are precast concrete with Papadazzo marble veneer. The entryway will feature a 30-foot stained glass domed oculus, and the residents will have 10 staff quarters, each with a jacuzzi and a kitchen. The 13-bedroom home is expected to sell for more than $100 million when construction is finally complete. The project will be the fourth most expensive home in the United States. The world's next largest home is Via Leopolda, located on the French Riviera of France. It has a total of 8 hectares in land, what is equivalent to 8 football fields. The house was built for the Belgian King Leopold II, who paid 1 franc for the land in 1902. In 1915, it became a hospital, and later in 1950, it was bought by Giovanni Agnelli, owner of the Italian car brands Fiat and Ferrari. Later on, the banker Edmund Safra bought the house, but after his tragic death, the mansion was owned by his widow Lily, which she eventually sold to Prokhorov. Via Leopolda is currently owned by a Russian tycoon, Mikhail Prokhorov, who bought the mansion for 300 million euros on August 8, 2008. The mansion is located in the hills of Villefranc-sur-Mer and beaulieu sur mer a few kilometers from the Mediterranean city of Nice. It has a garden of almost 8 hectares, with different olive, lemon, and orange trees that require more than 50 full-time workers to take care of it. The mansion, amongst others, has a room of 400 square meters and 12 pools. The main house contains 19 deluxe rooms, 14 bathrooms, antique furniture, and terraces. You can also find sports courts, a bowling alley, and even a movie theater. As expected, it also contains valuable marble and old period artwork. It's been featured in many TV shows and has appeared in Forbes magazine, as it's considered one of the most important properties in the history of Europe. House shopping millionaires can almost always have their pick when it comes to real estate, whether it's a sprawling Georgia manor or space in a ritzy DC suburb. But a new mega mansion recently hit the market with a price tag only the super rich can afford, $500 million. When it goes on sale, it would become the most expensive home in the United States, eclipsing the Chartwell estate, known as the setting of the Beverly Hillbillies, and currently on the market for $350 million. Sweeping in every direction is a panoramic view of Los Angeles and the Pacific Ocean. Beneath the main building is a gargantuan glass and marble residence with moats, four swimming pools, 20 bedrooms, a nightclub, a bowling alley, a cinema, and walls and ceilings made of jellyfish aquariums. The developer bought the lot, which included a 10,000-square-foot house, for $28 million in 2012. Six years and lots of bulldozers later, a 105,000-square-foot behemoth fills the site. LA has since tightened building regulations, so another home on this scale is unlikely. This was a huge gamble for the developer, and seven years later he still hasn't found a buyer. However, the one is certain to be someone's dream home someday. At 1 billion Chinese yuan, or $149 million, this mansion is the most expensive home ever sold in mainland China. 
The 1,663-acre estate is named Taohuayuan, which translates to Utopia, or Peace Blossom Land, located on a private island on the city of Suzhou's Dushu Lake. It comes complete with 32 bedrooms, a cavernous wine cellar, a lakeside swimming pool, and breathtaking gardens, modeled on a UNESCO World Heritage Site. This record-breaking home is surrounded by Dushu Lake and covers a staggering 1,663 acres. Traditional Chinese landscaping gives this three-year-old home a heightened sense of age and grandeur. All 32 bedrooms are south-facing for optimal sunlight. Line. The 72,441 square foot mansion took three years to build, and all brickwork was handcrafted by Changshan Bang traditional architectural and building workers. The interior is equally as spectacular, with a beautiful wine cellar which looks large enough to store a lifetime supply of alcohol. Because of China's privacy laws, no one knows exactly who owns this incredible mansion, but it's certain that they have money to burn. Pensmore is one of the largest homes in the United States. Located in the Ozark Mountains near Highlandville, Missouri, that spreads more than 72,000 square feet, reaches five stories, contains 14 baths, 13 bedrooms, has exterior walls 12 inches thick, and was designed to survive earthquakes, tornadoes, and bomb blasts, and whose construction lasted from 2008 to 2016, with its owner Stephen T. Huff telling the Kansas City Star in 2015 that the house should stand for 2,000 years. Huff says the house will withstand an earthquake, bomb blast, and a direct hit from an F5 tornado. Turrets reaching high from that Christian County mountaintop practically spit in the eye of the twister. This is how homes, hospitals, schools, and retirement facilities should be built, he says. Seen for miles in all directions, this mountain crescendo, one of the largest houses in America, reaches into the Ozark sky like a mix of French chateau, university building, and something out of a fantasy movie. A herd of exotic hogs roam the surrounding woods, and rumors about secret tunnels just thicken the plot. Conspiracy theories abound that this property will be used by the Illuminati in the case of an apocalypse. Junk bond billionaire Ira Rennert has a massive house in the Hamptons. It's also pretty controversial. The business mogul, who Forbes says is worth $5.9 billion, was recently in court defending the funding of his Sagaponyak estate. Representatives of a now-defunct mining business he used to own claimed he looted the company to build it, and in late February he was ordered to pay back at least $118 million in damages. But the mansion, constructed for about $110 million but now valued at closer to $400 million, has been the center of a number of controversies since Rennert built it in the 1990s. The estate the actually includes four different houses for a total of 110,000 square feet. The main house alone has 29 bedrooms, 39 bathrooms, a basketball court, movie theater, and bowling alley. In addition to three swimming pools and miles of private shoreline, there's a hot tub valued at more than $150,000. The property taxes alone are $650,000 every year, more than enough to buy an incredible home somewhere else.